Hey guys, it's Mrs. Malott. We are here for chapter four, lesson four. The good news is, well, actually two things are good news. Um, <clears throat> today's lesson is all stuff we've covered before, and there's only two objectives for today. And those objectives are to identify four types of microorganisms and identify properties of each type. The second objective is to define normal flora. So those are definitely things that we covered earlier in the year. So this lesson really should be all of a review for you. So starting um, with microorganisms, remember anything that cannot be seen with the naked eye um, can be considered a microorganism. And there are four different time types that we'll be talking about, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. The first one is bacteria. Um, really in healthcare, it's the most commonly found type of microorganism that we can deal with. Um, it, there is a lot of diseases that are produced by bacteria. Um, and there, there are though some of these microorganisms of bacteria that are not any problem at all. They are um, non-disease causing. And in that case, for instance, like the ones that are on your skin, in your nose, in your intestines, things like that, they are supposed to be there. In fact, they actually help keep us healthy. Um, those cells or those bacteria are called normal flora. So the examples that this book lists are like the ones in the intestines that we had spoken of before. Um, that bacteria helps us make vitamin K, which we need for our blood to clot. On the next slide, you can see how bacteria can be arranged, and they are named based on how they are shaped and how they are arranged. So just to kind of review those things with you, if they are round, they are called cocci, and if they are um, a rod shaped, then they are called bacilli, and if they are spiral shaped, they are called spirilla. Now, uh, we can also name them based on how they arrange themselves. If they come in pairs, uh, we use diplo. If they put themselves in chains, we say strep. And if they arrange themselves in, in clusters, we say staff. And then, for instance, you can put those kinds of terms together. And if they are arranged in a chain and they're round, you can combine those two things and come up with streptococci. The next type of pathogen is a virus. This type of um, microorganism cannot live without a host. They can't survive for a long time without a host. They have to live off of another cell. Um, they have these infectious proteins that are um, inside and they're surrounded by this protein, um, and that protein is called a capsid. Now keep in mind when somebody is sick with a viral infection that it doesn't matter how sick they are, back, antibiotics are not going to work against them. The only type of microorganism that an antibiotic is going to work against is a bacteria. So if you, for instance, go to the doctor for a cold or the flu, they shouldn't anyway give you antibiotics because those medications work against bacteria. The third type of microorganism is a fungi. It is actually a plant-like organism. Um, there are also good fungi, things like mushrooms that you can eat, um, yeast that's in bread, things like that. But fungi are spread through spores, so they can be spread through the air through these spores, but and or by touching the spores. Some of the infections that we can get with uh, a fungal infection include um, athlete's foot, thrush, which is also called candidiasis. Some of you may have seen a baby that had um, like a white 
um, coating on their mouth from being on an antibiotic or something that's called thrush and there are on the next slide uh, there is a picture of what that looks like the uh, last type of microorganism is a protozoa this is a one-celled animal-like organism and we find these in animal or i'm sorry in water and in soil so if somebody drinks um, contaminated water for instance you might get a protozoal infection um, or if you swallow things or there are remember when we talked about vectors we talked about how a mosquito can bite somebody with say malaria and transmit it to the next person um, from their their last victim of their bite so to speak so with bacteria what happens is they get in and they destroy body tissues, they can destroy blood cells, they can stop ribosomes from functioning, which would then inhibit the protein synthesis or making a protein. Um, they can cause fluid loss and high fevers. Um, they can cause anything from low blood pressure to problems with blood clotting to paralysis. So there's a wide range of um, things that bacteria can do. Some of the signs that somebody might have a bacterial infection might include a high fever, an increase in their pulse or breathing rate. Um, if they have an infection that the drainage that's coming from that might not smell very pleasant, they could have pain or swelling at a site. Um, and so if somebody has a bacterial infection, what we're going to do to treat that is give them an antibiotic. Um, Remember, as I said before, the only thing antibiotics work against are bacteria. Viruses, on the other hand, they work by shutting down the cell itself. Um, they may cause cells to rupture, uh, and in which case, if the virus is inside the cell, then that those virus, those viral um, things inside the cell would then be able to be released out into the body um there are some there this isn't in your book but there are some viruses that come in and they actually take over the cell so it all depends on the virus itself symptoms um, may include low-grade fevers uh, there are some viral infections though that they can actually get a high fever muscle aches just kind of feeling tired and that kind of thing and sometimes people will have a viral infection and not even know it. Some may have what's called a latent stage of a viral infection, meaning that it's hidden and they have no symptoms. Um, and something happens later and the virus comes out and then they have the symptoms. Sometimes people have uh, viral infections for a long period of time, in which case they're called chronic. So they might last for weeks like something like um I'm trying to think if i have a like the flu i guess they could last a couple weeks or chicken pox or they could last years something like hiv remember antibiotics do not kill virus um infections so we are going to treat them most likely with rest drinking a lot of fluid making the patient comfortable um, there are antiviral drugs out there available for certain types of uh, viral infections but a lot of times those medications have some really bad side effects so we have to be very careful with them Fungal infections can be caused from inhaling the spores or entering the body through an open wound. Um, these spores are tiny little things that are resistant to environmental changes, making them able to stay dormant until the conditions are just right and then they'll come out and cause us to get sick. Um, A lot of times the spores aren't going to cause somebody to get sick if you're just exposed to them, if somebody's nice and healthy, um, except for when we get them on the skin, things like athlete's foot, jock itch, and things like that. 
Fungal infections are known to be what we consider opportunistic, meaning they take advantage or they get into places where they shouldn't be. So things like if you take an antibiotic and you kill off the bacteria, then the fungi take that opportunity to jump in there and cause a fungal infection, that kind of thing. Um, so we treat them with a medication called an antifungal medications. Um, there are some fungal infections that are resistant to those drugs, so you know just keep that thing, that in mind as well. Let's talk about protozoal infections. They are caused by um, ingesting something in contaminated water or getting bitten by an insect or something that has carried that protozoal infection to you. Um, so symptoms are going to depend on what the actual protozoal is, but some of them can have very serious um, side effects and debilitating illnesses that are caused by them for like, for instance, like malaria. Symptoms range widely um, for protozoal infections. Some are mild, uh, for instance, what they call a beaver fever which is caused by Giardia, uh, which is, can, um, you can actually get around here. Um, it comes from contaminated water and like drinking from a creek or something like that. So um, with protozoal infections, it really just depends and can vary greatly. Believe it or not, that is the end of our chapter. So um, we will review tomorrow so take a second and look over the snapshots of the journey um, there at the end of the, the PowerPoint and just kind of review everything um, and prepare for the review tomorrow. All right, I'll see you then.